All right, everybody. This week, I thought we could look at a pretty useful and uh, straightforward project for the homestead. Making a fence stretcher. Before we get all the designs here, I thought we could talk about some of the different options we have on the market. You can probably buy, you know, from your local track supply or any hardware store, that sort of thing. There's a wide variety of them out there. I've used most of these, not all of them, but a lot of them. And I still think this one's probably better uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I found this more useful and easy to use. Um, I also just think it was a nice project to work on, um, practicing the welding skills, fabrication skills. Uh, and then also, I thought there's some benefits to this that uh, made it easier for the fence I like to use in particular. So first of all, we talk about some of the other options out there on the market. Uh, the first one, this is right here. Um, it's a wood with a metal plate on it. Um, this one's, it's nice. It's probably one of the more affordable ones out there, but it comes with some drawbacks, mainly the usability of it. Uh, what you have to do is literally take off the metal plate each time um, you want to put the fence on it so you can sandwich the wood um, and the metal plate around the fence and then bolt it back down and tie it together. So you always have to have a wrench on you constantly. Um, so it just takes a little bit longer to get set up. Uh, but once you do get it set up, it is nice because it puts a uniform pressure along the whole entire fence, making sure that the whole fence is stretched evenly from top to bottom, which is pretty nice. But again, you got to carry a wrench with you the whole time uh, you lose bolts and tall grass. I've done that, you know, how to go look for a minute for the nut I lost in the ground. So that's one bummer about that one. Uh, the next option here is this uh, one with the three hooks on it um, and the post, the one right here. Yep, there it is. So this one's, this one's nice. Um, it comes with a post, so you don't have to take anything apart. You just slide this pipe through the fence, hook the three prongs around it. So you still get a pretty nice even pull along the whole top to bottom of the fence. Pretty nice pressure. Um, you don't have to unbolt anything, so you don't have to carry wrenches with you, or anything like that. However, I found that it does kind of put a little wobble in your fence at parts, uh, but pretty affordable. Um, pretty nice to use. The last one I haven't used at all, um, it is on the more expensive end, it's this one right here. Um, and the thing, I never bought this one is more expensive that I found at least uh, at my local shop, but it has these removable pins that you put the post up here, put the fence and then you slide these little locking, uh, I don't know, wedges in between. And it just seems like I would lose those constantly. I don't, I don't know about you, but I think they would fall off and I would, you had to go make some or something like that. So it also doesn't seem like it puts a nice even pressure along the whole vertical line of the fence. I mean, you'll get a couple spots that are pulled tighter so your lines won't be vertical along your high tension fence. All right, cool. Let's get into this one of how I did this. Um, so it's really just scrap metal. I mean, a wide variety of metal could be used. I just happened to have these pieces laying around years ago when I made this. So, you know, you can change it up. Um, I also made this particularly for one type of fence I like to use around here. Um, it's high tension fence. It's four by four inch squares, uh, four foot tall. So I made this placement to fit that fence perfectly. One downside is that um, is some other fences where they have skinnier holes at the bottom going to larger holes up top. It doesn't quite fit in my schematic here. Um, the fence still works. It just means it doesn't have that even pull along the whole entire um, fence. So you kind of get um, a couple vertical lines on the fence that aren't quite always vertical, which is kind of a bummer, but still usable. Um, main thing is if I could just get that same fence every time, I'd never have a problem. Well, cool, let's look how I did this. So it's a really straightforward project, right? Just a couple different types of metal. We have the, the bar here, we have multiple cleats, and then the support straps here, plus the hook in, tie right here. So really straightforward project. So all this is, how I made this, it's just one by two rectangular tube. All this metal is an eighth of an inch thick. Um, and then I just went through and got angle iron here uh, that's one and a half inch and welded it all along the bottom, making sure that my spacing for my horizontal wire um, is perfectly within the center of here, which is nice. I just went ahead and welded it to the bottom on all three sides of the square tube. Next, I went ahead and made this square I keep this flat here, which I'll show you in a little bit, is because I like the most often to use my high jack in a horizontal position to really crank the fence tight. I've used come alongs or even tie down straps, ratcheting tie down straps to do it as well. But the come along, I just like that really long handle 
um, put it in. Plus, I don't have to have an anchor post. I can actually use the um, high jack wedged against my H bar on the end of the fence and just prop up one end. Therefore, I have to bring my tractor around everywhere I go um, or get it perfectly in place. So I don't, need that, I don't need that weight to pull on. So that's one benefit. So because of that, I made this flat to sit right there on my high jack, which I'll show you a little bit later. And then these bars just make sure that the force when it's pulled in the center gets pulled down to the opposite end down here. Um, you probably don't have to have this all the way down to the end. I just happen to have the extra metal, figure might as well. But if, even if you put it down somewhere in this area, uh, you'll still get a full even stretch calling your whole fence. And then the last thing I did, which I think is very helpful, is I went ahead and put these little stops in right here. That way when I slide the fence in, in this spot, I can screw these bolts in, keeping it the fence in place constantly. It just can hang on there, which is very nice. I don't know if you've ever done it the old ones uh, where you finally get the uh, stretcher put onto the fence and while trying to get your hijack or your strap in place and enough tension, it slips off. So these bolts are very convenient for that. So it's pretty nice. So let me zoom in here for you to show you how these bolts work. <clears throat> All I did was take a regular bolt that has a long shaft without threads on it, cut the head off it. I drilled a hole through both sides of my rectangular tube. And I went through and put the nut on first so that the smooth shaft is through the bolt. Loaded the first nut to the square tube and then just welded another nut to the end of the bolt right here. So we have a handle. For the most part, you just need to hand tighten it. You don't need a wrench or anything like that. I had thought about putting like a little lip on here, um, a little handle to make it a little easier, but really, other than like maybe the first time you use it, when it's been sitting out in the rain for six months, it gets a little rusty. You get a wrench the first time, break it loose, and then it's all by hand. All right, cool. Well, let me go show you um, it actually working on the fence real quick. All right, well, let me get my test fence in place for you real quick. I'll show you how this works. It's obviously much easier whenever you have one end already tied, tied onto the fence, but we'll see if I can get, get to work for you. All right, it looks pretty good. So it's really just as simple as coming up here, lining up with your horizontal spots like so sliding it in and again screwing these two ends down like so right now it's stuck on there it's trying to come off now one thing to note is I like to leave at least two vertical lines at the end of this and if I had got tons of scrap, I actually bend it over. Um, so the horizontal lines are really tied in there, making sure that sometimes these vertical straps don't hook on to the horizontal ones super strong um, and they slide back a little bit. So by bending it over, you just keep that from stopping. Awesome. Well, it really is that simple. All right, y'all. Well, I hope that was helpful. Hope that gave you an idea of a, a nice, easy welding project to practice your welding skills. It's also a very affordable option. Always just save money in the homestead. Um, comes in handy quite a bit. You know, you generally hopefully only have to put the fence up once, but it's nice to have this laying around and only have to spend, you know, 20 bucks on something rather than a couple hundred like the ones you buy at the store. All right, as always, I appreciate you. Feel free to give me a like and some comments down there, what you like about it, what you dislike about it, what you do better next time. All right, y'all come back now.